for so long we've been here we've been trying to break ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another inspiring and fun-filled edition of the springboard hangout the springboard hangout is a, is a program that is run by the springboard roadshow foundation every thursday evening in this particular series we are talking about entrepreneurship 101 this is the fourth in the series that we are doing and the first one we looked at what kind of qualities do entrepreneurs have following that we followed on with having ensuring that we understand the ecosystem then from there we looked at funding and said do we even need money you know money money what is money you know and this week we are looking at business plans or as um, franklin would like to call it a business blueprint do we really need a blueprint for our businesses we'll find out if that is true or otherwise so you are indeed welcome to today's Springboard Hangout. Um, I know that you're looking forward to seeing Franklin, and she, he is here, but kind of not here. He will join us on Zoom today because Franklin is doing some business for the NEIP far away, and so he's joining us by Zoom today. But, but today we have in the studio not people who just teach us, but people who have run the course and who have stayed the, 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 the race and they are here to tell us how they did it. And this is Delali. Delali is, um, is, is, is going, is, you would love her story. I, I, I don't want to preempt her story at all. So welcome to the Springboard Hangout. My name is Kamfodokran. We'll go for a commercial break. When we come back, we dive right into the business blueprint for your organization. Stay tuned. Rent a car is my reliable choice 
for safety and comfort on the road. York's Rent-A-Car provides comprehensive logistic services to mainly blue chip companies as well as individual clients. At a time we needed a car rental service and York's fitted in very well per our standards. Their services is top notch. Drivers are on time. It was beautiful to see them behind the wheels and any time they pick up a guest, the guests were very, very happy. Already? Excellent. York's Rent-A-Car provides services and expertise that include meet and greet services at the airport, car rental, driver personal outsourcing, and vehicle detailing. Go, what, what's the problem? It's you. I told you. York's Rent-A-Car delivers world-class service to its customers, having their highest safety and comfort in mind. So watch him. Go over to open for him. York's Rent-A-Car runs 24-7 operations where customers can make car reservations and inquiries of our services online and also call our hotline. It was great seeing you today on the Springboard Hangouts. We have an opportunity for you to make some money and put into your business. If you want to win this opportunity, just do one minute video of your business idea or a business that you have and tell us how the business is, how the business is solving a particular problem and how you are making money or you are going to make money from that business idea. Send it to our WhatsApp line 24 nine 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 five 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 if you have any information or you want to make more inquiries about how to make the short video you can call the same line and they will help you welcome back and I'm sure you heard that ad uh, address, especially the, the 10,000 prize for someone who's sensing a good plan. This is not, it's not even very, a very detailed business plan. It's just a one minute video of yourself. What is your business? What, is, what, what products are you offering? Why are you doing it? What you hope to, what, to, to what impact you hope your products will do for your, for your clients? And who are your target market? And that is what we'll be dealing with today. So if you have a friend who you think will benefit from this grant, this 10,000 CD grant that will be given to one person at the end of this series, please call the person to be part. And meanwhile, you that you are joining us today, please send us a message. Give us, give us a shout out. Let us know where you are joining us from. As I said, I have in the studio um, Rosalind Delali. Ashigoy, she is the CEO of Del Chris Africa Limited, an entrepreneur who has stayed the road, who started with 20 CDs in her purse. Let's hear Doris, how uh, Rosling or Delali as you like to be called, yeah. how did it happen? How did your enterprise begin? The organization so much so that you've now won several awards which includes product innovation award in 2017 mm -hmm. and best graduate Enterpri enterprise development initiative by the exim bank yeah. how did it happen mm -hmm. it all started to i i think growing up i have the zeal i can see so many business ideas coming here mm -hmm. i say ah I think we can do this to help these people. I grew up, my mom was a nurse and a midwife, so we stayed in a, um, in, 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 in a quarters where the nurses hospital, quarters. nurses quarters. And then they don't sell food, we then you have to go far away to go get food. And especially breakfast, we take cocoa in the morning and I'm the last one, so I have to go all the way to that place. But we are closer to the children's ward. So I imagine how the kids cry while their mother have to walk all the way outside to get pori for their kids. I told my mom at the, at the age, um, like 10, mm -hmm. I told my mom, mom, do you know how to prepare porridge? And he said, yes, why? I said, I want to start a business. He said, are you serious? I said, teach me. He said, okay, then go and buy. Uh, we have maize, soak it, and then she taught me how to go about it and she helped me and she normally goes for her morning devotion so she wake up early in the morning help me prepare the porridge whilst I sweep do everything wash down 
and then go and sell my cocoa. By 6.30, I've packed off and I'm going back to school. And some, I have some teachers around my area who will always see me, by, the, by then I will not be late to school. So I think it was part, something of part of me growing up. Okay. I love money. I just keep the money. I don't spend it. <laughs> I love seeing money. Yeah, you like you love having the, the power <laughs> that the money so gives you. That's age. Uh -huh. You can imagine. Just that's the background. When they give me feed and feed those times, I said, Mom, why won't you put it, do a week for me? So that yeah, by the time you realize I'm putting it into business. So I keep money all the time. And my sisters, when they return from school, they might buy, buy me something small and take all the money from me. <laughs> they didn't know the value no, of what you had. I just want to have money. <laughs> and then sometimes, so I think my first cloth mm -hmm. that I tie as a young girl, I bought it out of what I did. Okay. My mom used it to buy it. <laughs> right. So here we have an entrepreneur, a burden entrepreneur. But how did that budding entrepreneur now become a full-fledged entrepreneur presently? Presently, it's based on the experience and everything I was working. But I realized that I would wanted to have own my own business okay. from the onset. Okay. So way back in school, immediately I got that mission. I told my people I started intending. I, I, I wouldn't work for so long. So I wanted to learn office practices. Mm -hmm. So my my friends, when we are on vacation, I'll start work. I'll, I've started working, and then they will come for break. You know, when you are back from school, visiting friends. But I will go to school. I will go to the work workplace, do all the things just to learn. And it has become something part of me every semester. When we are done, the people always want to see me. Then we grow up. When it came to where Dolcris came about yeah. was when I, my marriage didn't work. I have a, a child and I ran out of all the money and I didn't want to stay at home and be taken care of. Even though that's, that time, my mom and my sisters were like, we have other people around that we pay them. So don't worry, you will get back. But I'm not used to sitting at home. As I said, I see ideas I always around. So I decided to just, I said, Dakwa or Jewe, mm -hmm. that we call it in our language. I said, we can package this because actually when I was in a cry, it's not something I normally like buying because how it's been packaged, I don't know how they process it. So why don't I certify it? So my mom said, okay, I, again, I just picked uh, maize, roasted it, and to go through all the process and then have my first uh, production. Okay. And then I came to Accra, went to church, give it to my friends. Oh, this is it. Is that cool? Well, then they, some paid, some didn't pay. Yes, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we have to multiply the interest over the years. And they know themselves. Every year I ask them for my money. <laughs> so, but then at the end of it, oh, with the 20 Ghana cities that I had mm -hmm. in my difficult time, mm -hmm. even though people didn't pay, I made 35 Ghana cities. Wow. Yeah. So I realized that, meaning if I, those people were to pay, so I decided to take it serious. And every day, I am just in my room doing this product, day in, day out. Just come out, take care of my, breastfeed my baby, go back to the room, and then start doing it. And then I started asking questions. Do you like it? What don't you like about it? I started doing my survey. Research. Yeah, my survey about the product. Oh, it should have been this. It should have been that. That has any like giving me ideas to develop other products, or because I realized somebody likes it this way, somebody doesn't take sugar, so I have sugar free. Mm. I need to do sugar free. Somebody doesn't take maize. That was when people were actually eating according to their blood group. Okay. Uh, so brown rice is grown in my area. It's okay. so good. So why don't I do the brown rice? So we have the brown rice, we have the maize, we have sugar-free, we have uh, millet. Millet is very nutritious. Okay. Then I added it to it. Tell me how you have incorporated young women in the, in the area to help to, con to 
help with the processing yeah. of this thing. Okay, so as my story goes, I realized that there were other women mm -hmm. in my community with similar problems. Okay. Some, I always say that some would, they have one child and then they have another and our place, it's like an insult. Like this woman has three kids with three men. It's not actually their will to do that. But once they have one, they wanted to fend for that, they end up having the second one because they wanted the other man to take help them. But then, so I, I saw myself in their situation, mm -hmm. but what made me to overcome it, I mm -hmm. should help them. So they come and said, oh, this woman has kids. I have interest with people who have kids and couldn't take care of their children. themselves and their children. So this woman has kids and she's been selling water during the rainy season. They hardly eat. I said, come. They, want, they are also interested to come. They come in, and then once we cook in the house, we all eat, in the, we have our breakfast, we start working. Then in the afternoon, we have our lunch, even late in the... So they, they were so relaxed that they, we can work even up to 7, 8 p.m. Fantastic. They don't really want so to... So this is Del Chris's um, Zoe package, and you know, you had... You, you heard her talk about different brands of Zoe that they now do. Now, this is, um, I really love Zoe, and I can't, usually don't buy it in traffic, but definitely picking this one off the shelf is something that I'll definitely do. And therefore, she, is she has found a niche in the market, and she has identified and really drilled down the particular needs of different members of, the, of, 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 of um, her market, including those who are sugar-free, those who don't eat maize based on their blood type and so on and so forth. Now that is how detailed a business plan can be. And therefore now having had somebody who has practiced, let's now go to Franklin who will give us the nitty gritties about how we can get our business plan successfully implemented. Franklin, joining us on Zoom, most welcome today, Franklin. Thank you, Comfort. Fantastic. Uh, it's great listening to uh, Delali. And, uh, and I, I, I want to tell our viewers that Delali is one of the products of NEIP. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So, Delani, did, yeah, did, so. did you practice the, their business plan? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so then Delani would, would kind of um, 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 authenticate what you say to My us today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So you know, then, so, uh -huh, yeah. You tell us what is a business blueprint. When, when you have a beautiful idea such mm -hmm. as Delani's own, you know, discovering this from your community, from your mother. It, it, it comes to a point that after all that we have learned uh, over the weeks, how do I then uh, position myself that I can be able to attract good investment? I can be able to put this product into a very good work, uh, working frame for people to know what I have. And that means that my business now should get out of the mind and be able to now wear shoes to work. Okay, that's why you say uh, we need to have a guide like a map. When you're going somewhere, you need a map to guide you. Mm -hmm. So, it, once your business idea has come out, you have put all the flesh through. You need a map to guide you to be able to know where you go, where you stop, where do you pass. And so, this the business plan becomes your road map. That guides you to be able to ensure that at every point in time, you know what you are about. You don't do things after thought. When you have a business plan at every point, so from time to time, you review, am I on track? If I'm not on track, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? What should I continue? And because the business is in your mind, a third party needs to know. And one of the ways a third party will get to know what you have is through your business plan. These days, it is difficult uh, uh, you know, to pen down. If I tell the lady, 
And the learner has been writing a lot of business plans, you know, taking some of the Exim Bank, NEIB, and all the funding agencies. Because for you to convince somebody to put money into your business, they want to see your blueprint. They want to see what is guiding you. They want to see the principles behind your business. What is your marketing plan? Who are you selling to? And if you do the projection, what are your numbers like? Are you making profit? If you are not making profit in the first year, when do you think you can break even or make profit? All these things should be on paper to show somebody so that I can have confidence that, okay, what I'm seeing, it makes sense. So let me put money in this particular idea. So that is all about a business plan, uh, which is a, 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 a guide, a roadmap for every businessman. But, but mm -hmm. uh, today, mm -hmm. I want us to look at, you know, to write a 30 page business plan. Most of us do not have the time. Oh. That's it right there. Why, 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 why do we want to write a 30 page? How are you doing that to us? Can't we do a business plan in three pages? Yes, yeah, so we can. Yeah, you can reduce it to one sheet. one sheet. Thank you very much. Please, let's reduce it to one sheet. Okay, so let's yes, let's go. Now, business plan is done in one sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and it, it makes it, and we call it the business model canvas. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The business model canvas. Okay. It, 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 it's, it's simplified that when I take a look at it, it tells me exactly like we are going to use the Lally's uh, products. Yeah. Okay. As as an example. Yeah. As a case study. Yeah. For us to be able to fill a, a, a business model canvas. The business model canvas is a sheet of paper with just nine building blocks. Okay. So what's the first one? So, so the first one uh, we, we we call the. Uh, uh, customer segments. The customer segments, okay. Yes, the reason why we, we bring the client or the customer first is that when you're able to know whom you are designing the product for, you are in business. Yeah. So Sometimes if you don't know your customer, you you're saying that, so if I don't know my customer, I'm not in business. Is that what you're saying? You're not in business. Delaney, yes. do you agree? Yes. Very much. Why? Um, as I said, with my... Mm -hmm. First, I got people. Mm -hmm. Everybody just tasted. My customers tell me what they want. Okay. I'm not going to eat it myself. Okay. So it's their product. Okay. One said, I love pepper. The other said, I don't like pepper. So how I want their money. Okay. So they, should, they were my first focus. Okay. So even doing varieties were because of my customers. So okay. I, when I, I, you have to identify your customers, yeah. what they want. Once you, you have identified your customers, you now know you are getting to somewhere. Them. Yeah. Right. So our customer is, is very key and the rally yes. has so customer is very key. Yeah. So you identify your customer, you are with them. Now I've identified my customer. Mm -hmm. What do they want? What do they and want? They what you call yeah. Your value proposition. Okay. Okay. So, so for instance, they want pepper, they don't want pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go on. That Chris will let us know uh, her value proposition. You know, she wanted to produce, you know, this product, that one is a common product. Yeah. So her value proposition was to repackage a common product to meet a certain class, class of, of customers. Yeah. 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 Because sometimes when you see the that one on the streets, <laughs> the way they done it, you know, one time somebody told me that, oh, so I'm going to put that one now. Oh, around. So, you know, when you say something, people don't want to eat it. Yeah. And that's not the case. So, she made a value proposition to repackage it and to reproduce it in a way that meets even international standards. Yeah. yeah. To meet certain, the client that uh, she has identified, the market mm -hmm. she has identified. Fantastic. Then, okay. Once I know what I'm going to give to these people, mm -hmm. the third question I have to ask myself what is the third bedroom blog? Mm -hmm. So we are right, right, writing the business person number one on the sheets. I don't know if the technical customer the, uh, the chief. So the customer, mm -hmm. number two, your value proposition. proposition. Your value proposition. It means what are you offering yeah. to the market? Yeah. The third one will say um, your, your revenue stream. The revenue stream. To the market. Okay. Yes, revenue stream. Are you going to make money? Yeah. And if you are going to make money, in what way are you making money? So in the case of Delcris, uh, how are you making money from that one? 
Yeah. Now, Chris, how are you making money from DAPA? Can you, can you share quickly? Yeah, when, when I sell to my customers, mm -hmm. they, they appreciate because I know the, the, the value they have put on it and then they have met their taste, mm -hmm. they, they are willing to pay the amount I offer. And my uh, revenue, it's part of the, the cost and then my mark, uh, markup or my okay. profit. Okay. So this is my uh, uh, my revenue stream. So okay. where I am getting my money from is from the descent uh, my product where it includes my um, my cost of production, mm -hmm. my profits, mm -hmm. and all the overheads. Okay, and all the overheads, yes. including electricity, including everything, um, um, maybe um, gas and so on and so forth. All the all the all the ingredients that you use, I use, and the then your logistics. transport. Exactly, logistics. Okay. All right. So um, yes. So we, we, yeah. So Beckris is making money from selling her products mm -hmm. uh, to the market and to her clients. Yeah. And that is your revenue stream. If a business does not have a revenue generating stream, you are in a charity uh, business. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, they say if your business does not have a revenue stream, you are in a charity business. Charity is also not bad, but if you are in business to make profit, yeah. Yeah. then you must make sure that you are making some money, you are making some sales. Right. Some okay, so we have our, our revenue yes. streams. Okay. So then uh, we look at the uh, the fourth one. Mm -hmm. So the first one you have look at the customer, the second one you look at your value proposition, the third one you have look at your revenue stream. The fourth one is your channels. Yeah. When we say channels, yeah. Now you have no, you, you know your clients. Mm -hmm. You know what you are offering them. And yeah. You want to make money from them. So how are you going to deliver to them? Okay. So you are talking about channels of distribution. Yes, channels of oh, distribution. Sure. Yeah. So okay. We have two ways: channels of distribution and also channels of communication. Okay. In terms of uh, promoting your products as okay. well. Okay, 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 okay. So, so marketing as well. Are you going to mm. get a, yes, all the two are important. Okay. How are you going to communicate around it? Right. For them to hear about it and how are you going to deliver your product to get to the customer? Yeah. So in your case, how do you deliver your products to your customer? Okay, so customer. First, the first time I was telling you a story where I work, I used to work, mm -hmm. I sent my product there where they try it. First, we do testing. They tried how they sampled it. They like it. Some do recommendation to their friends. Uh, we go for events. We um, church. When we go to church, I we give it to we sell it at church. Mm. And gradually, people say, "I want to take it to my office from mm. church." They also took it to their office. And so uh, we have our uh, marketing was word of mouth from the beginning. Okay. We didn't do direct adverts, okay. like course adverts. But we, when you are coming, we try to, when you are bringing a customer, we try to give you something. Uh, where, okay, so you are, the person wants to buy 10. Okay, we'll give it at this price, but this is how much it is. So you earn something. So the person is motivated to bring more customers. So our channels were just using a uh, small marketing strategy, sampling, um, giving out, giving promotions, yeah. doing uh, uh, um, customized appreciation okay. and okay. all that. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Um, um, Franklin. Great. Yes. <laughs> so for, uh, and, and the Lally is perfectly following a, a good business model because when you are a startup, mm -hmm. you are a small early stage business like the Lally, you yeah. don't go advertising on radio and television. <laughs> Otherwise, you your business model. You mean you go, you go under quickly? <laughs> yes. So that is the best approach at the early stages. Okay. Word of mouth. Yeah. Whereas, uh, giving small uh, uh, souvenirs here and there uh, and to be able to sample it, yeah. all these are means of reaching out to your customers. Okay. Then when you are growing as you grow, you'll find now uh, technology has even enhanced ways of doing things. You can use the social media yeah, social media. And and at your home. It's really helped. With a, a beautiful uh, flyer, you can use WhatsApp, you can use your Twitter, Instagram, you can use your Facebook page to be able to now, as a means of communication, a channel to reach out to your customers. Mm. And I can tell you, those who are in the home improvement business, mm. you know, uh, uh, in the uh, real estate, now they are really using Facebook to reach out to 
many, many of their uh, targeted customers. Fantastic. So that is key. Okay. Okay. Now, so the, the fifth one mm -hmm. is what we call customer relationship. Yeah. How do you maintain your customers? Okay. To so, okay. That is, that is the key. Yeah. So in our past, as I said, appreciation. Now you've become a customer. The next time you bring somebody, he said, oh, last time I bought it from you, and then some uh, friend took it, and he said, oh, really? Then this is the one you gave to your friend. So we try to keep a relationship for those who do repeat Referral. buying, and then they refer to us. We started giving them... Um, uh, uh, some bonuses. Some okay. might not. It's not everybody who even appreciate. They just love what you are doing, and they are really willing to do. So we keep a relationship, and then they said, "Okay, I have give me the flyer." As he said, I'll send them flyers, and they also send to their friends. Okay. And so we have become. And I somebody said. My company is Dull Chris Africa. Oh, my name is Chris. I said you are a shareholder, so you have to start selling. <laughs> my name is Delali. Then you have to. So I start imposing, giving shares to people left and right. Whilst... <laughs> you see, and these are virtual shares, not actual shares. <laughs> yeah. So they feel so confident, and then the moment you even when somebody calls us and they say, "Oh, so where did you get it?" Is it a friend? What's the name? The next time, sometimes we can even pick the contact from the person coming to buy, and we appreciate you. Just a call. And then wow. when you call us, we time we save your contact. We have customers that we haven't met face to face before, but when we are chatting now, you think we are friends or sisters. They always call. We keep that kind of relationship oh, very, very tight. tight. So relationship with your now you friends. even ask questions. Oh, when they call you, how are you feeling? How was it? How we take feedback so they become and one person told me that, you know, it's been a long time I've been patronizing you, but I see that any time I make contribution, the next time you come, you make effects on the product. So the person feels like they are part and then, but to me, they are, for, they are my interest. So whatever they tell me, I take it in good faith. I do it. If I can, I try to do it. So I keep relationship and up till now from all the time we started, some are old customers, some are still with us, majority, and that is what has gotten us thus far. Wow. 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 That's indeed great customer relationship. Yeah. And I wish all clients, all, all um, um, uh, entrepreneurs exactly. would, 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 would understand the key role our customers That's play in our organizations because sometimes the way customers are treated you would actually think um, the the customer the customer if I, the, the service provider is doing you a favor yeah. for for providing the service or the product to you anyway at this particular point we will pause for our game changer from jojo Okram. when we do come back we'll continue this very very interesting discussion about our business Blueprint. My name is Comfort Okrand and we have in the studios today Franklin and Delali. Please don't go anywhere. Call your friends to be part of this interesting conversation. Telfa isn't global. It's intergalactic. This declaration by playwright Jeremy Harris won't shock anyone familiar with the fashion brand from Queens. In the last three years, Telfer's iconic TC logo has been everywhere. Its shopping bags are adored by celebs including Oprah, Lil Nas X, and Solange. But how did Telfer Clemens go from selling t-shirts on the sidewalk to creating an award-winning multi-million dollar brand? How did Telfer become intergalactic? Today, our game changer is inclusivity. The world of high fashion is often defined by exclusivity, with rich, white, and stick thin being the norm and everyone else seen as other. Telfer Clements didn't see himself represented there, so he swore to create his own world of fashion. Telfer's world looks like affordable bags, genderless clothes, and broken rules. And guess what? People love it! By building a truly inclusive brand, Telfa created the one thing high fashion struggles to replicate, a community. 
So it's no surprise that in a year where profits in the fashion industry were projected to drop by 90%, Telfer's collection sold out in 15 seconds flat. As we create, it can be tempting to only focus on people who are in the majority or who we can directly relate to. But Telfer shows us that a different, more inclusive path is possible and even profitable. This path shines through in their slogan, it's not for you, it's for everyone. This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okren. Have a phenomenal week. Welcome back. Welcome back from our Game Changer break. And inclusivity sounded quite interesting considering the customer segmentation we we're talking about just before we went on the break. Um, uh, Franklin, what do you what do you think about it? Yeah, it, 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 you can't build a business and only time you get your family. Or your church members. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Indeed. You know, uh, uh, the lady started from a small point, using her church as a point of contact. But in her mind, she has the whole country in mind. So yes, you build with, uh, 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 you start from a, a point, but you have a bigger community you are building in mind to reach out to, and that is important for us to be very inclusive in building and developing a business idea and really putting things in order. So this is how we grow. This is how we expand. If you have that kind of inclusivity, you are your product comes in and you know where they are going. You know people who are going to be able to consume your product or service. Fantastic. And that is something that every entrepreneur must bear in mind to ensure that you are inclusive. Don't be gender biased, don't be uh, ethnic biased, but make sure that whatever you do has a way of reaching out to many people. To the relevant people. Indeed. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, just a quick one. Um, um, Jerry, Jerry, oh, Jerry, great to see you today. Very, very interesting to have you tonight. And you're saying that great show, very inspiring and instructive. And Dinah, you're saying, hmm, Dinah, what's up? <laughs> share, share. Let us know what the hmm represents because this hmm is very, very loaded. What happened? And then uh, Minister Jesse Thompson, you, you say, this is very powerful. Thank you very much. And if you have, if you're watching us tonight and you have any questions, I'd encourage you to, to drop your questions so that we can ask either um, um, Delali or Franklin. But Franklin, before we went on the Game Changer break, we, we, we had just finished the customer segment and then we're going to yeah. the next segment, which, which, which looks at what? Number six looks at key resources. Key resources. Fantastic. Yes. What key resources do you need? Mm. to ensure that your business really run and thrive. Okay. Okay. So when, when I take a look at your business plan, when I see the a business model come the one sheet and I see your key resources, is it most often the mistake people make, you go and tell your uncle, uncle, I need uh, 10,000 cities or 5,000 cities to start this, uh, my saloon. Your uncle looks at you and looks at his pocket. And that's the money his bank account does not even reach out to five, but you alone want five thousand. <laughs> so you don't go asking for money, go asking for resources, and that's most of the mistakes entrepreneurs make. So you go, Oh, uncle, I'm sell, sell, setting up a saloon, I need some resources for my business. And your uncle says, What kind of resources? Oh, I will need rollers, I will need a hair dryer. Mm. It's easier for your uncle to purchase a hair dryer than for you to ask him for five thousand Ghana cities. Okay, so Delali, when we were chatting earlier, you talked about how you dealt with a particular resource that you raw material resource. How did you deal with that res the, that particular resource that you needed? Um, I I went back as saying my input mm -hmm. where where I'm going to get my raw materials from. Yeah. So I knew they were farming it. I have a standard. I couldn't do it directly, so I went to the farmers and teach them how to farm it. 
was part of the farming process and then I bought it from them. Now we have developed relationships. So even when I, you, you bring the product, if I don't get, have money, you still feel very okay to give me the product. And then you know definitely the Lali will pay you. Uh, I knew that I needed this, as they were even, he was saying, the idea from the onset was an export idea. That is, was what I, but then the response that people Local gave me, response. Yeah, that made me to realize, oh, there's market here. So meanwhile, I started only with 20 Ghana cities, but I used my own small pot to start it. Mm -hmm. I have a spot, so it was one of it. Now I need um, uh, the packaging material. I got it. I knew that uh, my uh, uncle has a car and then I didn't have money to go to Accra. So I scheduled my ma going to Accra with his going to buy his goods. He drives empty. So I joined it. So transportation was taken care of. I joined and then I get to Accra. I didn't pay for that, but I valued it. So these are the resources I knew I need um, vehicle to do distribution. I to bring. I need machineries. I need a particular machinery, specific ones. This and that. And I was getting it from other people, or I knew how I the how urgency or how scale of preference. So yeah. I know what I need first and what I need second. So anytime, even the money that we get and we do plow back. We use it to buy the things we are most in need of. For the particular for the, yeah. Fantastic. Um, I, 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 I really loved when she told me that she had done backward integration, yeah. but not that she yes. is doing it herself, yeah. but she has yeah. helped work or collaborated with her suppliers to ensure that they bring her their resources at the prime yeah. um, um, level that he, she requires for her business. Um, um, so, so, so I think that will lead us to uh, key activities that we have to incorporate in our, in, our, in our plan, doesn't it? Fantastic, yes, the key activities. Yeah. So in, in the food business, we call it the operational uh, uh, activities. Yes. But so the key activities, what do you need to do to be able to ensure that the business will run? So what are the key activities that you need to do? So I'm sure that, that Chris has some key activities that she planned and she's still working on some of them. Yeah. How she'll be able to get the business really running. Fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic. Okay, so we have, I think, just three more to go. What can we run? Okay. Run, yeah. So that, that's a yeah, key partners. Okay, quickly, key partners. Uh, what, what partners do you <laughs> need to ensure that your business really, really survives? Yeah. For Delcris Food and Drugs Authority, yeah. is uh, yeah. <laughs> how how uh, well, how easy or difficult was it working with food and food and drugs? Um, it was. I think my partners, I knew uh, I needed a food certification from Food and Drugs Board. Raising the money was a challenge, but I knew MBSSI then was in, uh, in this, uh, was in operation. Now Ghana Enterprise Association. Enterprise Association. Association. So I, I, they were also one of my partners if, because I am small, I got, I know I needed media. I use, um, 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 the social media. I knew of uh, Eisen Bank that I can get some funding from them. So I write to them that this is what I needed. To, so my partners, I knew I, I, I need to get, um, th there are a number of them that I, because it's farming, I need input from uh, input yeah, sellers, suppliers. my suppliers. I need, so all these people, I identify the people I feel comfortable working with, mm -hmm. knowing that at the end we we don't have enough money, mm -hmm. and then we are not going to, you know, if I have to bring my business plan for you to give me money, I have to prove some things to you, mm -hmm. not just bring an idea and tell you how marvelous I can get it. <laughs> but so we were doing it gradually. So as I told you, the first one with 20 cities, we got 35 cities. So you know that uh, the next, this lady, and this is how I have done it. These are the people I need to consult. This I needed, I wanted to do export. So I get export promotion to, to register with them. And 
it kept on. I have a series of partners that I needed, government as well, any regulations that will come up uh, uh, that will affect my business. Whether that time, that was when they started doing uh, made in Ghana. Mm, yeah, 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 They started, yeah. and uh, our former president, Kufuor, yeah. was talking about made in Ghana. So I realized that they were policies and not forgetting all my NEIP when they came <laughs> as well. They were my partners. I knew that they were youth concerned, they yeah. were youth focused, yeah. and then agribusiness focused. So I got people, I, because I know the industry I am operating in, I, I got all those people. Food, uh, when you go to Ministry of Agri, in my area, and here, few they know about us because we are dealing in agriculture inputs and uh, so we are these are our partners we listed them and we always have some good relationship with them getting fda wasn't easy but it, it went through we got our fda because this when i went there i have to walk severally and the they couldn't give me parameters because they said that was the first time somebody was bringing this product for certification. So I decided to run normal analysis on my product myself. Then I thought of now going to Standard Board. Standard Board has standard for granite paste. They have standard for corn flour. So we, they put in, uh, we sat down and then they put in the standards they have for all my in ingredients. ingredients. And now develop a parameter on which they can't. Uh, evaluate you my to get whether it's of good standard it took some time but at the end i got my fda set my my product certified by fda that <laughs> is some <laughs> one really really inspiring entrepreneur delali and for for those of us um, listening tonight i think um, delali should should be a great uh, inspiration to us or a guide point because here you are somebody who is finding out information and if you remember in our first episode we talked about the need that as an entrepreneur you need to find out what information there is there in the ecosystem we also talked about networking you couldn't have done it to those various institutions without having the particular networks in place or relying on who you know to help you to also show you what kind of ropes you must you must you must um, um, climb. I mean, Delali, you. I mean, we brought you here for the business plan, but honestly, you have given us far more than than than, 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 than I, I had even expected. And by the way, those of you who are on the Springboard Mentoring Platform, you know Delali is our mentor for the entrepreneurship group, and she is one phenomenal person there. So, Delali. The Springboard for Rochelle Foundation we want to thank you as well thank you. for mentoring our young people because you teach them the practical side of, of entrepreneurship, not just the book. Um, even, even though Franklin has, has <laughs> his organization, yeah. your, 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 your story really teaches them tenacity and yeah. perseverance yeah. and, and um, ensuring that um, where, where, they, where, where the road seems long, if they keep at it a little yeah. at a time, yeah. they'll be able to make it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for, for, for you being here for today. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Eric Ochoa, you're saying resourceful program, and then you also say, wow. Thank you very much, Eric, for, for, for joining us tonight. Um, um, so, so we continue, um, Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, so I think we have the last... Uh, Pillar, yes, the last the, pillar. The, the cost structure. Mm -hmm. You see, so the, 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 the key resources that you listed, mm -hmm. like the things you need, mm -hmm. uh, the Lali needed some key resources for your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all those key resources, now you cost them. Mm -hmm. And that, that comes to the cost structure. So let's say the Lali will need an oven that will, use, will be using to fry the, uh, the maize or the beets. Or the, the rice, uh, she will need the pan, she will need the uh, uh, packaging material, and all the things that she will need, she needs to be able to cost them. So that at a glance, I see how much exactly the resources that uh, uh, the, the entrepreneur will need, how much is going to cost. So this gives me an overview 
of the business. I know your customer. I know what you are offering them. I know you are going to make money. I know how you relate with your customers to keep them. I know the channels through which you are able to uh, deliver your goods and services and also promote your product. I know the various uh, key resources that you need. I know the key activities you are putting in place to ensure that the business is accomplished. I have seen your key partners and I know how much you need. Your business plan is ready. It is ready indeed. <laughs> Um, 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 and we really appreciate that. So then we have today, we've been able to draw out our business plan and we've also looked at how practical that is. Now, when you, when you um, drew your business plan, Delali, where did you, what did you do with it? I think it's one thing drawing it. What do you do with it? Yeah. It's given me a very clear picture of what really I need at what time. Okay. And then, as I was saying, that I, I now I now have my thing uh, scale of preference yeah. with urgencies because you are, you might be I I was working with limited resources, mm -hmm. and then so it gave me a broader picture where I want the product to get to. Am I there? So as I ask the current where I am currently, where I want to get to, yeah. and who to help me in funding it. Who do I communicate with? I look through my uh, partners. I know NEIP is there, and then they helped me. <laughs> I, I knew I have to go to the bank, of which, because I am young, I think bank was out of my way. That was a personal decision for yeah. my business. Yeah. Knowing my, myself, I didn't want to go to the bank. I knew exactly when I get the money, what do I use it for? If in case I ask for 100,000 and NEIP give me 10,000, what do I use it for mm. that will be beneficiary to the business? Yeah. yeah. Because this business, uh, uh, business canvas have a clear picture, as simple as it is, you can have it in your pocket. So in your, even when you sleep <laughs> and then they wake you up, I have 10,000 for you, what do you need? I know I need a frying pan before. <laughs> Uh, I will tell you, do advert for me. I wouldn't use the ten thousand to go and do to run an advert when the product is not there. Fantastic, this fantastic. Gives you a clear picture, and then it's easy to absorb. It's easy to for you to communicate whoever you are talking to at what point. When now everybody is busy, and I need additional money from Ms. Uh, Franklin. I could just tell him that I need money for this, and then I know what, and then he, would, he himself would be happy. I wouldn't disappoint myself and him, but I, I was on, I, it would make you or uh, get you on point all the time. Okay, so talking about additional resource, Franklin has, or let me say NEIP, has a 10,000 CD price for one winner on this program. Let's take a listen to it. Technical. The, the, the. It was great seeing you today on the Springboard Hangout. We have an opportunity for you to make some money and put into your business. If you want to win the opportunity, just do a video of your business idea or a business that you have and tell us how the business is, how the business is solving a particular problem and how you are making money or you are going to make money from that business idea. Send it to our WhatsApp line 024-9999555. If you have any information or you want to make more inquiries about how to make the short video, you can call the same line and they will help you. Indeed, you have learned how you can make the five, the, the ten thousand prize. And when I still told um, Delali that she doesn't qualify, she said, she said, "Why did I take her out?" Delali is out on the running, so the the road is free for you. Please send in your one minute video. Yes, you're saying something, frankly. Delali is out. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So Delali. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, I will. yeah. <laughs> Jerry is asking, Delali, keep up the good work. Where in Accra can we get your products to buy? 
Okay, we are in Melcombs. Yeah, all in... the Melcombs shops. Mm -hmm. We have our products in there. Okay. Yeah, currently they have they have stock of Okay, it. so yeah. this is Del Chris. In case you want to yeah. um, 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 purchase the lollies, Zoe, which I kept eating through, and I didn't invite. Oh, I'm so sorry. I invited <laughs> Big Italy to enjoy the, the, the this thing with us. Promise also says that keep up the good work. <laughs> And um, Kenneth Ejiri, you are saying that awesome to the business model canvas. And Alfred Ninson says that awesome program. Thank you very much for those beautiful comments. And um, so, so, so almost we've almost come to the end of another insightful session. I want to say that this Sunday, don't miss Albert's Springboard Virtual University at seven o'clock on Joy FM. It's going to look as well as on Facebook and on YouTube. We have, we are going to, we're going to have a very intense look at the engine room with the one and only my sister, Anita Eskin. You have to watch it because it is one of a kind that you cannot miss. So thank you and I hope you would watch it. Also, don't miss a repeat of this broadcast to, um, on Sunday as well at 5 p.m. On ETV, it's going to be uh, awesome. And um, before we run out, I'd like to ask um, uh, Franklin, what are your final words for us tonight? All right, so uh, as they heard from the Lali, the Lali didn't have to know anybody from all the areas of seeking support for your business. People think that I must know somebody there. I, I never <laughs> knew the Lali. <laughs> no. She took both steps, she applied for our funding, and yeah. she went through. Yeah. So take the both steps. Make sure that you have a simple business plan. Don't go to somebody to charge you to write a, a 40 page business plan that nobody will read. <laughs> have a simple uh, model. business model canvas. Carry it in your purse, in your pocket, and show to anyone you come across. And I can tell you, you have value for your business. Fantastic. Delani, your final words for us tonight. Rightly, as you said, um, you don't need to know people before your business tries. Um, it's not always you need money to start business. You need all that starting point. I always tell people that um, everybody says you need money, but I think that you need more than money when you want to start your business. You have great ideas, sample it. Whatever dream you have, don't think when you have the dream, you had good goosebumps. So when you are narrating it to me, I should also have it. <laughs> First, I wasn't in the dream with you. You had it. So prove to me that this is how I wanted it. If I had come to you, mommy, that I, I, have, I have Dakwa, I have Joey, and I'm going to package this. It wouldn't... Don't expect me... I don't expect you to wow. <laughs> don't bring your idea and think that... People that even you saw in your dream helping you would while in physical start how no matter how small it is this business if my product one is even three cities now know that my starting capital was twenty Ghana cities and I didn't know all the places that I've been through uh, I've been to and got support I applied in Volta region. And I even got access to my fan there before I met Franklin. They didn't know me. Nobody knows me. So you just believe in yourself. And whatever I believe in, whatever belief you have, it's, it's the, the supernatural. If you are a Muslim, pray about whatever you are doing. I added Christ to it. And that is why the ideas are so clear to me that is my belief so whatever you believe in add it to your ideas and then it will take you you'll go far thank you whatever you believe in add it to your ideas that you would go far and that summarizes our business plan or our business model canvas for this evening's entrepreneur 101 session we have been privileged to have Franklin and Delali joining us. And I know you have enjoyed it as much as I did. I was blessed. I was challenged. And most importantly, I had a beautiful bar of Zoe to keep myself company in the studios. Until we come away again, cheers, join me. And let's ensure that the businesses that we think about, we dream about, they can come to fruition because we go 
one step after the other. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. And we shall meet again next week. Thursday, same time. Don't go anywhere. Bye. Turn around.